Today's date is July, 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 Thursday the 11th, I think. August is coming up. in the month of September after that. July the 4th was last Thursday. This is the 11th, I believe. Either the 10th, no, I know it ain't the 10th. It's the 11th or possibly the 12th. I think it's the 11th. But anyways, I'm here right now at Mr. Rollins' house and we're going to do a will and testimony of what this gentleman has to say pertaining to his last will and testimony. Mm. He just wants to verify the problems that he's been experiencing in regard to territorial rights in regard to his father's last will and testimony. Since his father that I know very well passed away in January of thir January 3rd, 2019. January 3rd of this year. Yep. There has been an ongoing slot of controversy in regard to how the will was written out and his intentions which would be interpreted interpreted what was your father's name my father's name was Donald Rollins no middle initial no middle initial how old was he whenever he passed he passed in 92 in 1992 no he was 92 he was 92 he was 92 years of age. Where was he born? Uh, he was born in Kentucky, Hendersonville. Born in Hendersonville, Kentucky. I personally know Mr. Rollins. Now you can hold it yourself. Okay. Hold it just like that as we're going down the road because I cannot drive and I got to be hands free. So okay. you, you can hang on to the phone. So I got to go like this. You do if you want to see you. Okay. If you want to visual, if you want to see you talking. Yeah. Okay, or if you want to just view the property for right now as we're driving by. Yeah. How many acres is here? Seven? No, this is 2.3, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters acres. Yep, two and three quarter acres. And this is in between Sharon, Tennessee and Sidonia, Tennessee. Yes. Yeah, it's a nice little property. It's spread out and cleaned up and used to be a lot more trees, but my father and, and my older brother, he uh, they leveled out quite a few of them. Right, pointing towards the property there. Yep. And now turn the phone back towards you. Yep. Back around towards you. There you go. And um, your father's wife, well, she was originally from this area, correct? My mother, Sidon uh, she was originally from Sidonia. Right. What was her name? Oh, Joan D Willard Rollins. What was her maiden name? Box. She was a box. But she was originally a Davis. Originally a Davis. Okay, and she married into the Box family. Is that how that become? No. Her father become her, her, her mother. Her mother. Yeah. Was a Box. Yes. Is that part of the same family up here that owns the uh, B and R gear? Yes, it is. It that is. was that was her brother. That was her brother. I yeah. See. Benny Benny Box. Benny Box. Yeah. He he's been laid to rest here at the local cemetery that we're driving by about now. Right here in front of Victory Baptist Church on Highway 89. Yep. Is it over where that American flag is? No, oh, it's in a very far corner. Far corner beyond the American flag. Yep. I yeah, see. he wouldn't have that. Okay. But. Anyways, the issue has come up pertaining to uh, your father that whenever he passed away, the property was supposed to be divided equally, correct? Sure. I mean, that's exactly how it was explained to me by him. Multiple times. Multiple times. You know. 
and he also expressed his feelings that if he was you, that once he did pass, he would that he advised you to cut all tides and run and run. Oh yeah. But the way Sheila, which is appointed the executor of the property, which would be legally your sister. Well, she was my sister all the way up from the time. I mean, I was adopted. From but, from her sister's sister. Yeah, from her older sister. From her older sister. And so she was automatically going to be in the family, regardless of whether he was adopted or not. Well, it was all as they call it in house. Right. So we were all relatives, one way or the other. But somehow or another, they manufactured an ideal, a plot, to put everything in her control, way before you ever come from. And Illinois back to Tennessee, correct? Oh yeah, over the last 20 years she's she concocted some kind of idea because uh, 2013, 14, somewhere around there uh, my older brother overdosed and they had been to uh, so many funerals in the past that they watched and talked to the families because they knew them so well. Right. And found out that all oh, when they got put in the retirement home or, or or the weekly county nursing home, that oh the bills were so expensive they lost their houses their accounts everything. Well, whenever your father originally was from Chicago that moved down here, yeah, you told me that you had some sort of escrow that was set up in your account, right? Well, my mother she used to work at Pepperidge Farm, and from the time I was five years old, she was buying stocks in care, you know, and I was the co-owner. Right. And when I got to be 21, I had to sign off on them. And that was about six years before they came down here. Right. So that money was in, locked up into, locked up in an IRA or whatever, however they put it. I think it sure. was uh, just a CD or something. Right. And she told me when I signed off on it, she says, whatever we buy, you'll own half. Well, okay, that's fine. And what the hell did I know? I'm a 21-year-old. My mother and father asked me to sign something. I signed it. I didn't look for value out of it because, you know, they, they it was their investment. Besides that, you always felt assured that you was part of the family, not only uh, metaphorically, but legally, because they did legally adopt you while they was up in Chicago. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've been le legally a... Uh, family member since I was three and a half. Since you was three and a half years old. But the fi papers didn't get finalized until I was five years old. Okay. You're saying that because of the boost that was obtained by your original mother's inheritance pertaining to the escrows up in Chicago help your father, your biological father that has passed away since January of this year, help them to be able to make a sizable down payment on this... They bought the property outright, cash. They cashed in all those stocks, they cashed in most of those stocks up north. Right. And with Pinnacle Bank. Right. And they have the records and all that stuff, and every single one of them had my name on the on on front of that bond. Right. So. And now since your father has passed. And since my mother passed 15 years ago. Right. And my father passed recently. Right. In uh, the past six months. In the past six months. My uh, my sister has taken upon herself to weed me out of the will. And my older brother, too. Only because she's very greedy. And she's always never had control of her life and now that she's got control she's power hungry she's using this as uh, leverage to try to use me as a what do you call it a uh, pawn oh no a this Ponzi, is the a Ponzi oh uh, no this is I want to say she wants to try to make me live a life of servitude to her almost like a slave oh yeah pretty much and I, as far as I know so slavery isn't a, it, it has been abolished it's been abolished now since uh, 18... And it, Lincoln eight, took eight, care of 18, that. 1880 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And Lincoln took care of that. Right. But, uh, but the bottom line is they're using this property. They have. She has weaponized this property to the extent 
that it's either my way or the highway, and because of it, she is refusing to issue out your part, which rightfully belongs to 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 you probably more so than any other member. I agree. Because of the escrow that they got up in Chicago that they cashed in five or six years before they come down here and bought this estate. Now, as soon as they came down here and bought this estate, every single one of the other kids, not every single one, but most of them, there was four of them, and every single one of them came down here and just sponged for 20 years. Sure. And Free hand my out. dad didn't have too much left, but what he did have was locked up, and, and he did receive a couple of sizable checks from other relatives that had passed on and left left him uh, a sizable amount. And we're talking less than, I don't know, probably less than $200,000, counting the house. Counting the house. But still. It's the principle of it. It's the matter of fa the fact that my father said that when he dies, he says, she'll be the executor. She has her orders, and her orders are that uh, she is to... Uh, Liquidate. Calm down. I know this better than anybody, so let me fill in the blanks. Uh, let, uh, she, her orders are to to uh, gather up all the all the debts and gather up all the expenses and everything else, pay them all off, put him in the ground with his with my mother in the cemetery with a prepaid plot because the plot has been paid for for over ten years. Uh, he wanted to be buried, but she decided to cremate him. There's a lot of suspicion there for for other extenuating circumstances concerning the hospital, but, you know, nothing I can prove, but still, you know, there is, there's things that just ain't right. You me, know, me as a witness got associated with the family whenever I moved back here in 20 and I'm still explaining okay, how my ahead. father wanted it. Go ahead. Um, he wanted him, to, her to gather up all that, take care of that, and then whatever's left, it would be subdivided between the alive children. Here, point the camera over towards you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the, the children that are still survivors. You know, any of them that had passed, not to, pay, not to give them anything. I don't know why, but hey, okay. Uh, that's how we want it, that's how it'll be. Um, she has taken upon herself to liberate twenty thousand dollars right off the top, uh, buy her a brand new car. So it's and not, and to take a forty thousand brand new. It's pretty new. It's a brand new car. She brand, bought it second handed. Brand new car. It had zero miles on it. Well, it had a few miles on it, but it didn't mean shit because that's just the one they rode to people around and say, "Oh, you like this car or not?" Okay. Um. Boy, that really is a shit house. I mean, uh.